Um, wait a minute. M1 MacBook Air, M2 MacBook Air, M3 MacBook Pro. Is Apple trying to trick us? I have a little theory on that and why Apple is selling the $1,600 M3 MacBook Pro, which basically is a MacBook Air inside a MacBook Pro body. We'll come back to that. First, let's do some performance tests. I'm gonna kick things off with some C++ code. I'm gonna generate, what is that? 10 million integers, stuff them into an array, and then do a quick sort. We're gonna look at how the thermals handle during these tests. I also got a multi-core implementation of a sorting algorithm. It's a merge sort, but it's not the recursive kind. And this one uses all the cores. So here we'll compare the speeds between the MacBook Airs, uh, excuse me, MacBook Airs and Pro. And we'll also see the difference between the multi-core and single core performance. I'm also gonna do an Xcode build for a more realistic project scenario. Now to run this, I'm gonna use the time command. Boom. Now you can tell that this one is a single core operation. There's main right there. 99.8% of the CPU, which means it's using only one core. There we go, it's on core six right now. There is that little spike now the os will automatically switch between cores sometimes so you can see there's a little bit of a spike there it went to core 8 it left core 6 again and it went to core 7 but it's always using only one core and this process only takes 45 megabytes because we have 10 million integers that's about 40 megabytes not huge our multi-core test is bigger so while it's running why did i say this was a macbook air it only has two thunderbolt outputs just like the macbook air whereas the pro machines the m3 Pro and the M3 Max, those machines support multiple monitors and they each have two fans, a very different layout internally. Sure, this machine carries the MacBook Pro name, but inside it's basically a MacBook Air. All these MacBooks share four performance cores and four efficiency cores, and I don't think that's an accident. That's not to say it's a bad machine. It's a great machine and it has all those extra benefits that a MacBook Pro has, just not the internals. It has the HDMI port, the SSD card reader, the bigger, brighter 14-inch screen compared to the 13 inch macbook air there's also the 15 inch macbook air which has a bigger screen but this one is brighter it has bigger speakers a bigger body for heat dissipation that's important but my guess this is just pure speculation is that apple is moving their product line further apart they really really messed up with the macbook air m1 it's such a great machine even now and apple really came out of the gate with that one got our attention but it hurt apple over the next couple of years and i think this year they've learned a lesson and they're going to be doing some changes so my guess is the next macbook air is going to be a more consumer friendly device making the m2 macbook air probably the last really really powerful macbook air i'm thinking they're going to downgrade the next macbook air whatever is going to be available keeping the macbook pro the base model as a pro machine is going to be difficult when there's things like macbook air m2 around we will see but here are the results m1 macbook air did that sort in three minutes 56 seconds pretty long time <laughs> m2 macbook air three minutes 41 seconds faster but not huge amount faster and almost a minute faster than that the m3 macbook air oh sorry uh m3 macbook pro is that joke getting old i think it's getting old uh, stop it alex Two minutes 55 seconds for that one next let's run the multi-core one now this one also has 10 million integers so let's see oh it's done already <laughs> <laughs> Why was it so fast? Well, this test uses all available cores, showcasing multi-core performance and what that can do. You can think of it as a team of workers, cores, tackling a job together. And instead of three minutes, 56 seconds, the M1 MacBook Air finished it in 0.45 seconds. And instead of three minutes, 41 seconds, the M2 finished it in 0.27 seconds, almost two times faster. And guess what? The M3 MacBook Pro finished it in 0.29, slower than the M2 MacBook Air. But you know what? This test is so short, we're gonna increase that parameter. I've changed it from 10 million integers to 1 billion. I feel like Dr. Evil right now. 1 billion integers. Gentlemen, silence. <sighs> What's that gonna do to our memory footprint? We are actually multiplying it by 100. So that's gonna be four gigabytes. And four gigabytes is something all these machines can handle. This one has 16, 24, and eight. None of these tests are really memory bound, except for this one could be if I were to increase that integer again. But we're gonna keep it to four gigabytes so that we can stay under that memory threshold. Let's run it again. This time it should take a little bit longer. And if we peek at the activity monitor here, you might catch that main 
Malt is using those eight cores. We're seeing 773% CPU usage here. Sounds a little over the top, right? But it's actually possible because each core of the CPU can be used up to 100%. So with multiple cores working full tilt, and we've got eight cores, the percentages add up, reflecting almost 800%. And that temperature is starting to go up. We're at 91 degrees right now, 108 degrees on the M2, but the M1 is staying at 50 degrees. What is going on with that one? Is it even working? Well, yes, yes it is. It's using the same kind of CPU, but it's at 54 degrees, which is amazing. The M1 is staying cool while the M2 doing the same work is at 108 and 100 degrees for the M3. Notice the fan is starting to pick up 2500 RPM over there. Wow. These two machines are handling this task without the fan. And this one decided to turn the fan on. This could be a real differentiating factor right here. Not only is this machine using the faster chip, the M3 chip, but it's got that fan. So if things start to heat up like they do now, it can turn on the fan this one doesn't have any choice so it can't turn on the fan and therefore we might just start seeing some slowdowns in that processor and this one i don't know what's going on with this one it's just taking its time but the temperature is staying nice and cool at 60 degrees i'm not really surprised here the m3 finished first the m2 finished second and we're still waiting for the m1 but the m2 pulled this off in three minutes and seven seconds the m3 two minutes and 45 seconds and finally the m1 finished this in four minutes and 57 seconds considerably slower we got pretty high temperatures but we weren't throttling yet we can keep an eye on throttling using this little utility i'll link to this down below not sponsored i don't have an affiliate link but this is a little cool find <laughs> gadget that i found it shows you how much power is being used how much ram is being used what cores apple neural engine gpu and whether it's throttling or not right here so we're going to run this again and let's keep an eye on that throttling situation okay the m1 thermal status normal temperature under control everything is cool I mean, it is a little slower, but thermal status is normal. On the M3, we've got our fans up to 4,400 RPM. It's managing to keep the temperature lower, but it's noisy now. Got a fan blowing, you can hear it. And the thermal status is normal. But here on the M2, we've got high temperatures and the thermal status is moderately elevated. What does that mean? Well, it's throttling. Throttling is like your MacBook hitting the brakes to avoid overheating. It slows down performance to keep temperatures in check. It's a safety feature, but it can and will affect your processing speed. One other thing that's interesting to pay attention to here is power used, and that directly correlates sometimes to the performance here. It's kind of like checking how much fuel your MacBook is guzzling. Higher power usage means more robust performance, but it's also a trade-off with efficiency. There's a balancing act between power and performance. So 35 watts peak and 11.45 watts average on the M3, whereas on the M2, the wattage is actually higher, 13.18 watts as an average, and really low wattage on the M1, 5 watts on the M1. Very efficient machine, but it's going to be a little slower. And we've got some final numbers. Not too bad, actually. I was expecting a bigger difference here on the M2 because it was thermal throttling, but it turns out it's 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Didn't have such a huge effect on it. 2 minutes, 40 three seconds on the m3 and four minutes 56 seconds on the m1 now i'm gonna run an xcode build which is over 70 cocoa pod dependencies so it's gonna be a pretty big build representing a large project this is called xcode benchmark and i'll link to it down below if you want to do this yourself and let's go i actually did more extensive xcode build tests on all the new macbook pros as well as an intel and an m2 max macbook pro you can find those videos i'll link to them down below just below the like button and since we're on the subject if you like like videos like this consider subscribing for more content like this and here are the results the m2 macbook air got 160 seconds and we got 137 seconds on the m3 macbook pro so it's not a huge huge difference there and 270 seconds on the m1 macbook air quite a bit slower sure which should you buy if you're considering one of these machines i'll share my recommendations just after i pay off my credit card yes i buy all these macbooks myself so i have to pay for them somehow which is why sponsors like pixie bricks really help me out pixie bricks is the first low code platform transforming your everyday web experience as a robust chrome extension pixie bricks lets you add automation and enhancements to the web apps you use daily with no need for an entire development team 
It only takes minutes to modify any web interface using the user-friendly page editor, giving instant feedback thanks to its point-and-click nature. Whether it's AI co-pilots, smart bookmarks, or automated checklists, or more, you'll find pre-made templates that deliver a powerful yet customizable user experience that you can start using in minutes. Stop adding extra screens, start integrating, automating, and innovating with Pixiebricks. Get started for free today at pixiebricks.com and head to the templates section to explore specific use cases. And thanks to Pixiebricks for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now back to my conclusion. Apple's M1 MacBook Air remains a standout for value, in my opinion. It offers a solid performance for everyday use and it outpaces older Intel MacBooks. I'll be on the lookout for some deals and I'll put them in the description down below if you want to check check this machine out. Still a really good value. The M2 MacBook Air strikes a balance with a higher end build, a larger and brighter screen, especially with the 15 inch model that I reviewed recently, and it has more power than the M1, saving you money compared to the M3. My advice, opt for an M1 or a really, really good deal on a refurbished M2. Check out my recent video on refurbished machines. The M3 MacBook Pro, priced at $1,600, comes with Pro features like a brighter screen, HDMI, a cooling fan, but with only eight gigs of RAM. People have been kind of angry about that recently. This machine is for a certain set of people, a certain set of users, and a certain set of developers. It's fit for those that are willing to pay for the latest MacBook perks without expecting a high-end performance of a M3 Pro machine or an M3 Max machine. You're still getting the body of a MacBook Pro machine and it's Apple, so they're gonna charge you more than another brand. Is eight gigabytes enough? Stay tuned for my in-depth review of the base model M3, coming out soon. Is Apple trying to trick us? They sure do make things confusing by putting what amounts to a MacBook Air amount of performance into a MacBook Pro body. But I don't think it's a trick. It's just a price ladder move that Apple has done for a long time and will continue to do, just like other big brands do. So we've got MacBook Airs, and sort of pro. <laughs> That's the lower end lineup right now. For now, if you want to go a step higher and watch some MacBook Pro pros build code and even bigger projects than what I've showed you, watch this video right over here. And I will see you in the next one.